Hello, my name is Gregory Osborne. I'm an instructor with XR Terra, and in this module, we're going to be talking about haptics with the XR Interaction Toolkit. So haptics is basically a term that describes how we try and replicate the touch part of our senses when we're doing VR. You know, we have the eyes covered and we have the ears covered, but, you know, being able to touch and feel things is important, especially when it comes to giving feedback to the user. So there's like a couple of like, there's a spec. So there's a spectrum of haptics, like on the high end, you have these gloves that restrict your movement and have like these little vibrating sensors on like, there's like 135 of them on your hands and they kind of vibrate and they make it feel like you're actually like flicking off an object and they can do a bunch of really complicated stuff, but those are really expensive. And on the other hand, you've got like really, really basic haptics, just something that vibrates in your controller and that's just a way to give you information. So that's the one that we're gonna be focusing on because that's typically the type of haptics that our consumers have access to because it just comes by default in the controllers that you get. And we're going to talk about how to actually trigger those haptics with the XR Interaction Toolkit. And a note about haptics, uh, they should be used to help give the user important information, right? It's similar to like changing colors on a button or animating an object when you hover over it. Haptics are basically a really good way to give confirmation to the user. Like, am I hovering over this? Am I selecting this? The haptics are telling me, yes, I am. At its most basic implementation, sending haptic feedback has two parameters, intensity and duration. And you can kind of vary these parameters and give different types of information to the user. So for example, if you're hovering over a button, you can send a really short, low intensity blip to let the, the user know, like, hey, you're hovering over something. But on the other side of the spectrum, if you're like performing an action that like is like a spell or something, you want the user to feel powerful, like they're holding something really important in their hands or blasting people, then you might want to max out the haptic impulse and give it a nice long kind of shake so that they know that they're important and powerful. The XR Interaction Toolkit implements haptic feedback on the interactor components. You can set impulses for hover and select enter and exit events and the, it's actually relatively simple to do this. Let's actually go into Unity and set some of this up. Now I'm not going to be able to demonstrate to you that it's working because Zoom doesn't send you haptic impulses, but I promise this is how it's done. So I have in my new empty scene, I have nothing but a main camera. I'm actually going to go ahead with the XR Interaction Toolkit set up already. I'm going to go to XR, XR Origin. I'm going to delete the old camera. This XR Origin comes with, under the camera offset, the left-hand controller and the right-hand controller. And these left and right-hand controllers come with the XR Ray Interactor. This will also work on the direct interactor if I was to make some kind of, if I was to, for some reason, put a direct interactor onto this light for whatever reason, then I would also be able to get access to these haptic events. But I'm going to go ahead and move that. Let's do this on the provided left-hand controller. In the XRA Interactor, there's a section over here near the bottom of the component that's called haptic events. And if I open this up, it gives me a list of events that can trigger haptics on the interactor. So for example, on select entered, if I want to give the user feedback, like, yes, you did in fact select, I can check this box and it asks me for the haptic intensity between zero and one and it asks me for the duration. Now for select entered, let's say I just grabbed something, maybe i would put it at like 0.4 and then have a duration of like, I don't know, 0.2 seconds. And then if I wanted a haptic event when they let go, I could do one that's maybe a lot smaller or something and maybe a lot shorter. So there's on select entered and exited. There's also on hover entered and exited. Canceled is when something else like interferes with it. So it's like, oh, you dropped it or something else grabbed it from you or whatever. That's when select canceled happens. It's kind of hard to replicate. And typically you don't really need haptic feedback for that anyways, but they have it as an option. So we have it for on select. We have it or on hover. You can also allow playing haptics on hover events even if you are being selected. So there's like a checkbox is like, if I'm selecting something and I hover over something else, does I do I let the hover event still happen? And right now it's checked by default. But that's kind of the basics of how to set it up with the XR Interaction Toolkit. If any, any interaction that comes from the Interaction Toolkit, you can make it so that 
on select entered, a haptic event gets played. But this is going to apply to every single thing that you can select or every single thing that you can hover over. This is kind of like your baseline haptic feedback about interacting with the application. However, what if I wanted to trigger it not on hover or not on select? I just want to, I want to like when I, like for example, that example that I had of like casting a powerful spell, what if when that spell is cast, I want to give a bunch of haptic feedback to the user. Well, that would be done through script. So let's go ahead and create a script to, just as an example, just to show you the line of code that you would use. Because again, I can't really demonstrate for you that the haptic feedback is working. But let's go ahead. I'm going to create a C Sharp script. I'm just going to call this haptic feedback. And I guess I'll just put this onto the left hand controller. It doesn't really matter where we're going to put it on for now because you're not going to be able to tell that it's working. And I'm just going to go ahead to left hand controller and it's on here, haptic feedback. Let's open this up. In order for me to access the haptic feedback stuff, I'm going to need to reference the XR base controller, something that I can't do. If I try and type XR base control, it's not going to show up. That's because all of this is included in the namespace using Unity Engine dot XR dot interaction dot toolkit. So once I've added this namespace, I can define an XR base controller. And you do need an XR base controller. What this is, is it basically includes either the XR controller action-based or XR controller device-based, which is kind of an older implementation. So this kind of contains both of them. So you define an XR-based controller, I'm going to call it this controller for now. And I guess on start, I'm going to say this controller, I'm going to set it equal to get components XR base controller. It's just going to find the XR base controller that exists on this game object. We put it on the left hand. And then I'm going to, I guess I'll make this a, a public custom function so I can call it from a Unity event. I'm going to declare a public void send haptic feedback. There we go. And inside this function, all that it's going to do is I'm going to access this controller. And then I'm going to call a function that exists on the XR base controller called send haptic impulse send haptic impulse is a function that accepts two parameters the first is a float that represents the amplitude from zero to one and the second is a duration which i guess can last as long as you want but you usually don't want to have haptic feedbacks that go for five seconds or whatever because that's not really useful information to the user at that point i think in this case i'm just going to give it i'm going to pass it the maximum amplitude and i'm also going to pass it a duration of one 1.5 seconds why not and i end it with a semicolon and we're going to save this i'm going to go back into unity back in unity i'm going to go ahead and create for myself just a simple interactable i know technically this would have worked if i just used the xr interaction toolkit like set up but I'm going to create a cube. It's going to be a simple interactable. And on this XR simple interactable, when I hover over my cube, I'm going to go ahead and call the function. On It's on my left-hand controller. I'm going to access the haptic feedback script that I just made. And I'm going to call this public function, send haptic feedback. I'm going to go ahead and save my scene so that doesn't crash or whatever. And then I'm going to hit play. And when I hover over the cube, it will, even with my right hand, or where am I? Where did I go? Oh, there's a cube. And even when I hover over with my right hand, it's my left hand that ends up doing the vibrating. And it's vibrating quite a bit. Um, but yeah, so I am able to trigger haptic feedback on my controller. And if I really wanted to care about like which hand was doing the selecting or doing the hovering and sending the, the hover to that, that would involve the function that I've got here, accepting the parameter of hover enter event arc. So just as a, an example, let's just make sure, let's just show you how you might do that. So right now this hover entered event, it accepts hover enter event arcs. I would go into my script. I would make sure that it accepts hover enter event args. I just call this args for now. And with this args, I would then instead of this controller, I would type args dot interactor object. So I have the interactor game object and I'd find it's transform. And on this transform, I would say get component XR base controller. There we go. And then on this XR base controller, I would then send the haptic impulse to the specific controller that has just selected me. I guess I could just use the same 1F, 1.5F, and uh, I'll comment out the old implementation. I'm going to save this script. I'm going to go back into Unity. Back in Unity, I'm going to need to reassign the Unity event because I changed the parameters. So I'm going to go here and instead of calling, I guess, 
on left hand controller, I'm instead going to call haptic feedback, send haptic feedback, and because it accepts the hover enter event args, it gets floated to the top of the list. So now what should happen, even though I put it on my left hand controller, it technically doesn't matter which object it's on, because this hover event args will send the correct controller. So I'll hit play and I'll go back into Unity and test things out. And when I hover over this cube, my right hand buzzes and then my left hand buzzes and I can have them both buzz at the same time. And that's because we're using that information about which controller is the one that hovered over this cube, using that information to send haptic impulses on that specific controller. That's going to be our introduction to haptics in the XR Interaction Toolkit. Hopefully this is useful to you and we'll see you in the next module.